Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm talking about the Electrovoice Everse 8 battery powered speaker. Now you may remember me from this room, I've done videos on the Bose S1 Pro and the JBL Eon Compact. This is EV's version of those battery powered speakers. Now, I wasn't originally going to get one of these. When I first heard about these, I said on the forums, I've got two already, I am not interested, I don't need one. And then I saw the specs. The specs of this are really, really, really exciting. I had to get one. I have to compare it to the Bose S1 Pro and the JBL Compact and see if this thing is, is as good as the specs say. So today is just an unboxing. Please subscribe and ring the bell to follow me along on this little journey. If I make more videos about this, it means I like it. If you don't see more videos, it means I don't. <laughs> Today we're going to unbox it, check out the build quality, see how easy the app pairs and see what we think of it. Uh, initially, the next video will be playing some sounds, checking out the effects and things like that. So do subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already and let's get started. Let's unbox this thing. Okay, so I'll give you my initial impressions. Build quality is very important with these things. The way it feels to carry it, the weight of it is very important with these and how well the app responds and connects to the device on the initial startup. I never have problems with that, but I know some people do. So basically in the box, we have the manual here, which is also available online, has all the specs, which I said before, are very impressive. So do check this out online. We also have this triangular kind of box, which houses the power cable. I have a, an a IEC power cable. In England, they call it a kettle lead. I have that already, so I'm going to leave that in there. You get the power cable in there. And then we have the speaker. This is what we're really interested in. So it's packaged well. You can see it's in a plastic bag. And I can really feel it's got some weight to it. Now, this is supposed to be very powerful compared to the other speakers, but it's still pretty light. Look at this. Still pretty light. So let me get it out of this packaging here. I'm opening it upside down. There's a bag there and a protective cover here. There is no actual cover for the speaker. All you get is the speaker, the instructions, and the power cable. Now, first of all, that handle is really, really good. The handle is very comfortable. Sounds silly, but it's very important that you have a good, comfortable handle. Since we're going to spend most of our time, I presume, carrying this thing around, because it's got a battery inside it. So we want to be carrying it around to check it out, right, to, to use it. Portability, I'm trying to say, is the most important thing with a speaker like this. Now, the grill is metal, good quality. Yeah, again, really impressed with the handle. I mean, check this out. Very comfortable to hold it by my side. Big handle, comfortable handle. That's awesome got some weight to it but it's like i think this is like 16 pounds it feels fine it's nice because it looks like a conventional speaker it looks like my kind of um qsc cp8 that i have it looks very professional and yet it's much easier to carry this is about five pounds lighter than that speaker which is really cool and we'll get into some more specs later on but basically what appeals to me with this thing is it looks professional it's supposedly much louder than the other battery powered speakers and it has app functionality with things like feedback killing. Now you'll say, well, the JBL has that. Yes, but the JBL is not as powerful as this on paper. And that's what excites me the most about this product, I feel. We also have a nice cover here. So you do get a cover. Oh, well, I just scratched it already with my nail. Holy cow, that's not good. Let me see if it comes out. And I think I've scratched it. Oh, well. Bear that in mind, this thing needs a cover and it doesn't come with one. There is going to be a bag for it, which I'll review in a later video. You definitely want the bag. A lot of these kind of speakers do get scratched easily, I've noticed. On the flip side of that is it's very light to carry. That obviously is important that you have a lightweight plastic, but it's going to scuff very easily, I, I feel, uh, based on my nail on the speaker there. All right, here's a cover on the back here. So it actually covers the controls to keep them water resistant. If you're using it just for Bluetooth music, that's great. Obviously the problem becomes 
if you want to plug in a guitar, not quite so useful at that point. But if you're going to be playing music through this, if you put a thin cover over it as well, which they also sell as an accessory, this is almost a totally waterproof speaker, which is very nice. Okay, it just pushes on and pulls off. So it kind of clips into the surrounding there, and there's like a rubber frame to hold it. So that's nice to have. Don't think I'll be using it that often because I plug in guitars and things. There's your control. So minimal controls here. You don't have your physical controls. You have a power out, which is great. The JBL has a USB power out. This does too to power your phone or iPad. Also has a dedicated power kind of barrel connector for a wireless system, which could sit on top. And this is flat on top, so you can put something on top of it. That's nice. You can probably power a guitar pedal with that as well, which is also nice. There's your regular power supply, which is good to see. There's a foot switch control. Some people love that to turn on and off the effects. And there's also a mix out, which is like an XLR. And you've got input one, input two. You can edit all the parameters on the screen here. There's a digital screen to edit all the parameters, which is cool. But I think the app will be the most useful for this one. Some people will want those physical controls. Some people won't. So the screen is there. Let me tell you what I think of the screen. It's just like a you know two color screen it's not a touch screen or anything it looks fine it says the battery's half power i better charge this up soon i press input one it says level i can turn that level up or down press the encoder you've got your 48 volt phantom power the preset the compression amount actually it's pretty easy to, to adjust this so you just press input one scroll down to treble turn your treble up you've got more treble very very simple i was worried that a little screen like that with one encoder would be hard to use is literally press the encode, no, press the channel or the output, press the encoder, scroll down to what you want, make the change, and hit hit exit, and you're done. So that's really good. Having said that, the app will be much more useful. Let's see if the app pairs straight away with it. But yeah, first impressions are, aside from the fact that I scratched it that easily, which is a bit annoying, um, that the handle is really comfortable. That's really important. It looks very professional, very important. The weight is excellent, very important. You know, the biggest thing to me, really, with this thing, if I keep this or not, is how does it sound? How loud does it get? Does it actually get a lot louder than the S1 Pro and the JBL? Because the S1 Pro is still smaller, still more portable, and hasn't scratched like that. So that is still appealing to me. And then the Eon, the JBL, it's been great. It hasn't let me down. So I don't really see a reason to upgrade. However, if this is like two or three times louder, then I can see this being a real kind of game changer for what I do because it will give me that extra volume. I could potentially use this at most of my bar gigs, whereas at the moment I've been taking the QSC CP8 simply because it's a lot louder and I don't really need the internal effects, but it's nice to have the, the internal effects at times as well. So let me see what we do here. It says push and hold to pair Bluetooth. So I push and down hold that. The screen lit up and I see the Bluetooth icon. So I'll go to settings, Bluetooth. And I'll just talk you through it here and show you on my phone. Remember, I haven't read the manual. I advise you to do that. So press and hold. Let me try that again. There we go. Everse 8 E4D8 has popped up on the screen. I'll click on that. I'm just curious to see how easy it is because some people say their devices don't pair with these Bluetooth things sometimes. I've never had the problem. Let's see how easy it is with this one if I have a problem with this. It's still pairing. Aha, pairing unsuccessful. Make sure it's turned on in range and ready to pair. Hold down the Bluetooth button. Hold for pairing, it says. There we go. Pairing mode, E4D8. E4D8. Tap that. Now it's paired. You know, I seriously have never had a problem with pairing any device. I don't think that's the first time. But it's paired the second time. So just try again. That's fine. As long as it doesn't become a long-term problem, that won't be an issue. So it says connected. Now let's go to the app. I've already got the app on here. It's called EV Quick Smart. And it loads up, it says, select your speakers. So I expect this to find it immediately. And it has Everse 8, E4, D8. That's the same one we just paired. So click on that and press connect. 
It says loading device on the screen. And it says pair. It says loading parameters. Again, this is just a real-time thing. So <laughs> if this works for me, I think it's a good sign. I haven't read the manual. I haven't done this ahead of time. I literally unboxed it, gave you my first impressions, which are very um, positive so far. And still loving this handle, by the way. I mean, I will be taking this to gigs. I will be trying this at a show based on the fact that I have reviewed the S1 Pro and the Eon Compact and the fact that I'm a gigging musician. I want to give my real just honest thoughts. This is not provided. I bought this myself. I want to tell you if this might replace those two speakers for you because I presume you've watched my other videos and you're into the battery powered speakers. It says current firmware 1.0.0, latest firmware 1.1.0. I like that. So straight away it's telling us we need to upgrade the firmware. So I'm going to do update firmware. Okay, that felt like it took forever, maybe 20 minutes, not too bad. I've plugged it into power as well because the battery was about 50%. The thing is, when you get one of these, you want to plug it in straight away, get it charged up to 100%, and then connect the app. Make sure the app is updated on your device, like uh, the actual app itself, and then connect that. If it says there's a firmware update, do the firmware update, and then you're good to go. Everything's done. You're charged up, and you've got the latest app on your phone or your iPad or tablet. And then you've also got the latest firmware on the device. It's important you have all those things done. And then it took a long time to transfer the actual file to the speaker. And now it says firmware update install on the back here. That's gone through pretty quickly. It's almost done. So now I'll go back to the speaker. So I'm going to go to Everse 8, forget the device, forget device on the phone. Turn off the speaker here. By the way, the actual physical power switch is nice. It's a physical power switch like on a regular PA speaker. So I'll press that on. It says it's charging because I plugged it into power to charge. I'm now going to pair it again on the phone. So hold down the Bluetooth button. Yep, it says connected. So now I'll open the app, which I quit. I, I think it's a good idea to do that. Just do open everything fresh again. It still says wait for pairing. So I'm going to cancel. Tap on the speaker again, connect, load device, load parameters, subscribe parameters, wait for pairing, and it's loaded. Okay. So again, had to do it twice. Don't like that. This is a brand new unit. Maybe firmware will improve that connectivity even more. Seems to me all you've got to do is try again. If there's a problem, it works a second time. But if you're late at a gig, and you shouldn't be late, but if you're late to a gig or something like that, you don't want to be fuffing around with that. I don't know, maybe they'll improve that. But second time is it's okay. It's okay. As long as it works the second time, that's okay. So it's now connected. And if I go on here to the volume and turn it down, it's it's changing on the speaker, on the screen here on the speaker. And if I turn it up, it's changing on the device in real time. So that's all connected. That's good. Let's do a little test of the app and make sure it stays connected and everything works well. All right, so we'll do this together and test this app out a little bit. So you see, when you load it up, there's your speaker, Everse 8, E4, D8. That's this particular speaker right here. Now we have bass, middle, and treble. I like that. So straight away, if there's a problem, you can just correct it right there. You can set kind of your master EQ. I presume, first time I'm using this. There's also a mute button. So you can mute it instantly with that button there and a mode button. So I'm going to choose like live music because I'm playing guitar. That's like a general EQ curve, I suppose. And then your global EQ. And then if you go to edit mixer, right, let's see. So channel one might be my guitar. So I'll tap on that. And look at this. This isn't quite nice here. So you tap on the, you highlight the thing you want. You see the way it's highlighted there? So I'm going to highlight level. And then rather than go in there and use your finger on that little fiddly control, you just go up and down on that big wheel. So I'm literally pressing, scrolling up and down on that big wheel. That's really satisfying. I like that interface feature a lot. So I can just change that from negative 80 all the way up to 42. And I heard some noise there, as you would hope so at that sort of volume. Leave that on zero then. So there's compression here, and there's an effects, and then you can change that effects to a different effect. Treble, middle, and bass on that channel. 
the ducker, which means it will lower that volume if you're talking, like if it's an iPod. 48 volts phantom power. That's off right now because I'm using a guitar in this channel, not a condenser mic. Scroll along and we find the effects. So I'm going to change that effect to reverb plate. I like a plate reverb on my guitar. Scroll along. You see, there's that graphic EQ or parametric EQ, which I would love to see on the other speakers that EV make as well. I love that control on my sound personally. And if you keep going, there's also the AFS. That's your anti-feedback. And that can be very, very useful. You see at the bottom right there, AFS. I'm going to turn that on. That should hear feedback and eliminate it. Again, the app is very responsive, very easy to use. And I like the features. Not as many features as JBL have, but a lot easier to navigate. And a lot more features than Bose, because Bose don't have an app at all, really. So <laughs> anyway, there's your main level there. So the main level right now is just at zero. The parametric EQ is off. So is there a low pass? No, there's not a low cut. That would be nice to have. But I guess you can emulate it. You know, you can go in there and like lower that all that low end down there, which at the moment is 47. So you could bring that frequency up to like a, to like 80. And then you can lower it down here, make this wider or narrower. But there's not actually, I'd like to see an actual high pass filter, low pass filter added to this screen. That's something that the JBL has that is very useful. You can kind of emulate it, but it's not quite the same. So I'm glad that's there, but let's see a bit more of that EQ, even more so without making the app too complicated. That'd be great. So I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to give a quick test. I'm going to plug my guitar in, take the headphones off and just play a bit and give you my reaction to the sound. Okay, I got to say, I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm very impressed. Those volumes were kind of around, you know, halfway. And in this room, it was really loud. Sometimes I find it's not the case. And I can still push that a lot more. I was getting feedback. The auto feedback wasn't engaging. But realistically, it never does. Auto feedback has to get a loud feedback at sustained volumes. Otherwise, it's going to just kill your playing as you're playing notes. So I kind of get that. I need to test this in the real world. I have been playing shows with a CP8 lately. I'm going to try this at that show. And if this can do that gig and make me as happy as the CP8, and in fact happier because of the built-in effects, I think this could be the way to go. Very, very strong first impressions. I don't like to give everything away on the first impressions these days because we change our minds. I will say, again, it looks professional. It's lightweight. Not the lightest, not the smallest, but almost and very powerful for what you get for it. I haven't pushed it yet. That's the only thing. If this will be pushed and could do a bar gig and still have a bit of headroom left over, this could be the way forward. Let me do a full review. Let me come back in the next video and actually tell you what it was like at a gig 
Let me tell you how it is over time. How does the app work over time? Are there any long-term things that I notice that bug me? Or does it really impress me as much as it has out of the box so far? It seems to be the most expensive option, but it, if it gives you that real-world volume and such a good app, it will be worth it. I'm rambling. Next video, I'll go into more detail about what, what's great, what's not so great, what worked in a real world scenario. But I got to tell you, just sitting here in my room and playing through it, it's very satisfying. Yes, there may be a couple of features that are not in the app. Maybe they can be added later on. I don't know. But as it is, as it is right now, I'm very impressed, I have to say. I don't hear a bunch of hiss. I feel like I've got a lot more volume to go. It sounds very good. The effects are very usable. I like it. Thumbs up so far. If you've got one of these, let me know what you think in the comments as well. Let's have a discussion. And watch out for the next video. Subscribe and ring the bell. It will tell you when the next video is. Also, watch out for my live streams because I do talk about this stuff in my live streams as well and offer more of my thoughts in like long, long, even longer form content than this. But yeah, this is the Everse 8. I'm impressed so far. Let's do a full comparison. Let's do a full review. But so far, this is as good as I hoped. So I'll see you in the next video and take care and be well. Bye-bye.